Joining us this morning, Tatiana Jordan. Tatiana Jordan. I get the name right. Jordan. Tatiana. Tatiana. Okay. It's Tatiana Jordan. Hi, welcome to Connect. Today we have a very special guest, Senator John Albers. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This is official, like really official, really cool. Um, how did you get to be senator? How did, what does that look like? Well, uh, I've been in office for a little more than seven years now. Uh, I was very passionate about serving my state and my community. Uh, and uh, after a long conversation with my predecessor about eight years ago, I tried to convince him not to retire, and he convinced me to run for office. Wow. We haven't decided who won that argument yet, but uh, it's been a, just an awesome opportunity to serve other people. And so for somebody who might want to get into the field of politics, what sort of advice would you give them? Well, I look at it as service, not mm -hmm. necessarily a, uh, a paying job per mm -hmm. se, right? So in Georgia, we have a citizen's legislature, which means we serve downtown 40 days per year. And the rest of the time, while we are participating in committee meetings and, and other type work, we also have real jobs in the real world. And I think that's really important to keep us grounded. So the advice I would give to folks that might have an interest is to get involved at all levels, whether it be at the city, the county, the school, the state, or the federal level, uh, and learn about those. Find your passion where you can really make a difference, uh, and then make sure that you stay grounded in the things that took you there to begin with. Yeah, so uh, I'll just share this little tidbit with you. I have always been very interested uh, in uh, politics and our government and how it works, but um, I've always been super frustrated because I like to get stuff done. I don't like to wait which is why I think I find myself in startups because we're lean teams and we just iterate quickly. I, you know, I couldn't even deal with a large corporation because there's so many layers of bureaucracy. And so um, for someone like me who's in this generation of like, I want it and I want it now, is there a, a place for someone like me in the government who like, we really want to make change, we want to make change fast. Do you see that becoming a reality? Absolutely, and actually, we have an awful lot in common. Uh, I think she's going to be on the ballot next. What do you all think? <laughs> I'm going I'm to be her campaign manager. Okay, yeah. That's the same way that I am wired. Uh, and one of the reasons uh, that I uh, chose to run for a state elected office was for that very reason, because we get things done, and we get things done all of the time. Some of that uh, is actually changing the law and passing bills. But, but other of those opportunities are when people call. Now we get about you know, anywhere from, from 10 to 50 calls, about an average of 25 a day of people needing some type of help. Uh, and it's that type of help that is most special to me. Um, I've helped children uh, to be adopted. I've helped um, families uh, who needed a special needs waiver uh, for their child to get extra support services. Uh, I've helped a small business to, to solve that problem with, uh, with taxation or permits that now can grow their business and they can hire. Uh, and there are countless more stories like that. Uh, and we call that paying our civic rent, right? And building treasures in heaven. I love doing that stuff. Uh, but I also love changing the law too. Uh, sometimes I like taking stuff out of it. Well, yeah. And other times I like adding new things to it. Uh, and we've been very successful doing that. And I've, I've made lots of changes over seven years. It takes hard work and determination, but we can be a part of a solution and it can happen quicker than you think. Absolutely, I'm very encouraged by that. And from a marketing standpoint, because I'm a marketing nerd, like. Is somebody documenting that help that you're helping small businesses and, and people with, like you know, video and uh, just capturing that, like to be able to tell the story of your time uh, in in serving our community uh, is so important because I I think people really sometimes don't know what you do and they need to know. That's very important. Well, not enough is the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. Now, I try to because I'm a marketing technology yeah. nerd myself. So, uh, yes, we're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. However, uh, it's, a, it's a battle sometimes. Unfortunately, the world we live in right now tends to be a lot of sensationalism, yeah. right? So what you might see, um, whether it be on the Internet, on broadcast TV, or in the newspapers, uh, tends to be sensationalizing an issue or two. Uh, in fact, you know, we'll have 2,000 bills and resolutions in any one legislative session. Almost all of those are really good stuff. They're bipartisan, everybody's working together. But unfortunately, that one or two issues ends up capturing 99% of the news cycle. So what I'm trying to get out to people is let's report on all the wonderful and positive news because there's so much more that brings us together 
than separates us. Uh, and I think it's a really great opportunity for us to raise the tone of civility uh, and just kindness and being positive to get things done. Right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's amazing what common themes that you learn, I don't know, in kindergarten about getting along with each other right. can go so far in your adult life. It certainly does. So quickly, because a lot of people, you know, stop learning about how the government works in fifth grade or in 11th grade. Um, and there are people that don't even realize, like, what is a session? How long is it? Oh my gosh, you have another job. Like, can you give a, like a how-to dummy guide to like your schedule? Uh, how many sessions are there in a year? And, and what does that look like? Sure, I actually love giving civics lessons and I give them for everything from, from that third grade class all the way up to uh, uh, senior citizens. Good. Uh, so we meet every year uh, as the Georgia Legislature, which is the State Senate and the State House of Representatives, for 40 legislative days. That begins the, f the second Monday in January uh, and then continues. And it's not necessarily every single day in a row because we take uh, breaks to have committee meetings and budget hearings, et cetera. So we're typically downtown in your Georgia capital till about the end of March to sometimes as late as April or even May. Uh, and then we can be called into special session if something's happening. That's only happened once in my seven years and that was for the purpose of redistricting and reapportionment. That's when the census comes out every 10 years and we have to redraw the maps to make sure that everybody has an equal sized district from our uh, federal congressional positions all the way to our positions down to school boards, et cetera. Uh, so we go through that process. Now, uh, what's an average day like down there? Well, I've spent 25 hours in the building straight before. Oh my gosh, I don't doubt it. Uh, I have, uh, you know, you're kind of juggling the things that you're doing, uh, but when I'm there, you know, you have to be immersed in there. Now, today, as an example, uh, my life interweaves between my business, uh, my political life, and my personal life, right? So that's everything from making sure my 15-year-old uh, gets picked up from work tonight at Chick-fil-A. Yes. Uh, to uh, being at my business office, having a series of meetings, doing the things we do, uh, to speaking at a Rotary Club, uh, meeting with a set of constituents, and starting to work on a bill that I'm going to be entering the legislative session in January of 2018. Uh, the good news is, is I think sleep's overrated, uh, <laughs> and I don't do a lot of it, so I try to <laughs> maximize my hours. <laughs> I was about to ask, like, when do you sleep, and how do you decompress? You have to decompress so you don't burn out. You know, uh, well, I try to exercise, uh, mm -hmm. although uh, clearly not enough these days, as you might see, uh, but I'm working on it. Uh, you know, serving, uh, I know we're going to talk a little later about being a, a firefighter and other things that I do, gives a great outlet for me, something that I love to do, um, but really it's quality family time for me. You know, I've got two boys and I've been married for uh, 24 and a half years, uh, and you know, those are the things that ground you the most, uh, and my most important title uh, is husband and father. I love that. Um, that's so important, and I'm really glad you brought that up. Let's get right into the firefighter thing. You are a fourth generation firefighter. That's huge. Talk about that. Well, it's something I love. Um, you know, something I've grown up around my entire life, uh, and uh, I really hope one of my boys will continue that to a fifth generation. Uh, but you know, when you grow up in a family uh, that has all these wonderful connections to uh, being first responders, uh, it just it's part of your blood and who you are. Uh, and you know, I find that firefighting and politics have a little bit in common. You're fighting fires literally and figuratively. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? so uh, many parallels. <laughs> But it also uh, gives me the opportunity to make sure that I'm helping out the rest of the firefighters here in the state of Georgia. In fact, uh, just this last year, uh, we passed HB 146, which allows uh, for coverage for firefighters who contract cancer. Uh, if you're a firefighter, your rate of getting cancer is dramatically higher than any other job. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, when and if that does happen, that we uh, as a state uh, or depending with the city, county, fire department can be there to support them in their time of need and their families. Uh, so I was very proud of that uh, as well as other bills that I've, I've uh, both sponsored uh, and authored for police, fire, and EMS uh, as well as our veterans. So I have a real service for anyone who puts on a uniform to serve us. Absolutely. And that's so important. Um, you really don't know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes until you've walked in them and you you truly have done that you've walked in that boot in those boots in that suit and yeah. been literally in the line of fire um and i just can't imagine how that helps to shape your perspective um to really be on the ground as well as in the house 
and I still do it. Uh, I'm still uh, active uh, for the city of Alpharetta, wow. uh, and I own two classic fire engines uh, oh. that uh, I have bought one and fully restored it uh, with my friend, mm -hmm. uh, and I have one other one we're working on right now, a 1931, so that's pretty exciting. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. If you want to send me a picture after the fact, maybe we can pop it up. Um, I have a little soft spot in my heart for classic cars and vehicles. All right. Uh, my first car, um, was a 76 Cadillac, baby blue with a white top, wouldn't even fit at the parking lot at Marist. <laughs> I had to park at the YMCA next door. I was like, hey, hey my AM radio is the coolest. So, yeah. That's fantastic. That's great. Well, you've made a lot of strides uh, with the state of Georgia. Let's talk about, you know, what you would say to businesses looking to move to the state. Well, you couldn't have a better place to move your business. Uh, as uh, we were talking about before we started, we're the number one place to do business uh, for the fourth year in a row, and that doesn't happen by accident. Wow. Uh, and we're gonna continue that trend because we're gonna constantly look of how we can continue to evolve Georgia and our policies and procedures in order to create that environment. Now, government does not create jobs, but we can create a great foundation for those jobs. So for that company that's considering moving here, what are they looking at? Well, around here, they're looking at schools and you know where I represent some of the best in the whole country uh, then you add into other things you know the cost of living oh. right uh, which is obviously a fraction of what it is in other areas of the country you've got uh, Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson Airport which is a direct flight almost anywhere in the world is the world's busiest airport we have the fastest growing port in the world in the port of Savannah uh, now the third largest in the world uh, we have companies that are streaming here in fact they're leaving areas like the North East, uh, the West Coast, etc., because they want to be a part of what we have. You can be downtown in the city, and then in 30 minutes, you can be up in the mountains, and you can be on a lake, or you can be in the ocean. There's so many things that we offer here, but most importantly, over everything else, is people. We have great people here. Mm -hmm. um, they're talented people. People want to come down here and bring their company and have the best employees ever. And that's what they get when they move to the state of Georgia. Yeah, I mean, the, the quality of life, like you said, the cost of living, again, going back to the startup space, um, I couldn't imagine surviving and having the life that we have in a San Francisco right. um, or Palo Alto. It, it just, it would be so, so restrictive. Um, I love this state. And uh, I am I'm so thrilled to hear about the strides that you're making. Um, and the film industry too. Film industry is such an incredible success. So Gosh. we are rated uh, number three, in some cases number two, uh, for television shows, movies, and commercials now. And in fact, just last week, we were named the number one place to uh, shoot those in the entire world. Uh, Hello. That's exactly <laughs> right. So we're really proud of what's happened. But this is a great way, again, where government can create the foundation by offering the incentives this has been the state investing about a nickel and getting $10,000 in return, creating a huge multi-billion dollar industry. And it's not just the actors and actresses. In fact, a couple years ago, we had Tom Cruise right next to my neighborhood filming, uh, which was really great for all the ladies in the neighborhood. They were very excited. Uh, however, it's, the, it's all the jobs that are created outside of the actors and actresses. So yeah. what you have is you've got carpenters, you've got electricians, you've got folks that are, are building the physical buildings and the sets there in Pinewood Studios down south of town is the second largest in the whole world now only second to Warner Brothers Amazing. Uh, and it continues to flourish over time uh, and I think you're just gonna see more of it I love it when uh, people are using you know their homes or their businesses as part of movies and uh, it's just a special thing for us to, to have made happen here absolutely I'm gonna take a quick break because I want to look at my question and make sure I get it right. I won't tell anybody. Yep, okay, so Nobody let's watch. see here. I mean, or you could film this, it's fine. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not perfect. We can um, edit. Yeah, okay, now my technology is acting up. Okay, perfect, okay, so. So, Senator Albers, let's talk about the path that that we're on and, and that you took to lead us to Georgia's best place to do business. Well, I certainly didn't do that by myself. Uh, in fact, you'll find out that uh, in anything we do, whether it be business or government, 
uh, you have to build a coalition of people. You have to convince them of why these are good ideas. You have to get all your facts together, uh, and then uh, you know take that momentum and in this case you know make changes to the law or changes to the way that we operate in the state. Uh, so from a governor deal all the way down to everyone in the Senate and the House of Representatives and all those that have supported us, we work together to find out the main reasons of why a business would relocate here or why they would grow here. Mm -hmm. I have a real passion for startups, right? And not only do I want them to start here, I want to make sure they stay, stay here. Stay here, right? yes, that's, that's the key is not letting that talent leave. All right, so one of the things that we've been doing is we created uh, a special uh, venture capitalist fund for the sole purpose of trying to make investments locally within this state. Uh, a lot of times they'll start with great ideas and great people, but then they'll get taken up to New York or to Boston or California and Silicon Valley. We don't want that. In fact, I'm working to create the Silicon Valley of the South. Yes. Uh, we call it Peachtree Valley. Uh, and we want that all here. And I think if you've seen what's been going on over the last few years, that is exactly what's happening as people are streaming away from those areas and they're here. And as we get more capital infused and more businesses that are helping each other out, uh, I just see this to continue to, to grow over time. Absolutely. I am so invigorated by everything going on here uh, in Atlanta and around the state, whether it's Atlanta Tech Village, Switchyards Downtown Club, ATDC, the new venture firms that are, that are really focusing on southeastern investments. Uh, it's huge. Um, and even the, the huge corporations we have now uh, really allocating assets towards startups and, and helping them, like with Coca-Cola's The Bridge, right? Bridge that gap between startup and large corporation and how they can collaborate. That's huge. Oh, it absolutely is. I was the ATDC yesterday, and, and I have uh, helped and mentored companies throughout several of those. Uh, the Alpharetta Technology Commission. Yes. Alpharetta's got more high tech companies than Atlanta does. People don't realize that, right? I did uh, so not realize right that. Right up here I in the known suburbs. That. Uh, so there's a lot of good things happening, but you're right, the, what the, the larger companies have seen is this is a great place for them to grow ideas, potential acquisitions in the future, yep. uh, looking at talent, uh, and it really it helps each other out, right? And now, you know, when you look at this from a, a broader scale, we're all really trying to do the same thing. So if we work with each other as opposed to against each other, great things can happen. Absolutely. The rising tide rises all ships, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so what's next? What's in the future for you? Well, uh, I've got to finish this interview and not flub any of my words. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, for me personally, uh, you know, again, my most important title uh, is father and a husband. Uh, so right now, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing because I've got a, uh, a rising 10th grader uh, as well as a senior in college. Uh, so I'm right where I need to be right now. In the future, uh, I am uh, an ambitious person. There's no doubt about that. I won't ever hide it. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm also a person who is very faithful. God opened that door for me at the time of my life that I wasn't even sure it was to be open. Uh, but it was the right time and those things happened accordingly. Uh, and I will use a combination of a great family, friends, and faith uh, and just be opportunistic when the time arrives. It's so funny that you said that. Not funny haha, but funny ironic. And I didn't tell him to say that because people who are watching this and know me and have followed my path know that I say this quite a bit, which is God opens doors where there are walls, because that has happened so many times in my life where I'm literally looking just at a wall, and all of a sudden there's a door, and there is no other way to attribute it other than the fact that it, it was a God thing. Absolutely. You know, many times I've tried to uh, not follow that plan God has had for me. <laughs> right. And he has humbled me and sent me where he wanted to go anyway. So I'm trying to do a better job listening. Yes. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yes. I, uh, you know, above all else, I like King Solomon, I try to pray for wisdom to, to be discerning in, in what he's trying to tell me. Wish sometimes I could just, you know, take this thing and like talk to him. <laughs> Literally, like, God, just tell me what you want me to do doesn't happen but that's fine it's fine I'm, I'm getting okay there, with there's that. not an app for that yet, <laughs> there's not an app for that but... yet <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the next session starts in January yeah always the second Monday in January okay. and uh, we're already preparing so when the the last session ends we take about you know a few days to, to regather ourselves and our personal lives and families and then you're right back into it uh, so what are we doing right now uh, is, is usually a question that we talk about and we have what's called study committees. So I have got a uh, special committee, Senate Re Resolution 222, and I'm looking at every single tax credit incentive with a group of senators to put a return on investment on each one of those. So wow. some of those 
like the film industry, have been extraordinary. Well, we might want to increase that. There are others that are just doing okay, but they're doing what they're intended to do, and we all need to know that. There are some that are not performing well, and we need to either pull those back or eliminate them altogether. Uh, that's just being good stewards uh, of the people's money. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a very important part, as well as we're looking at how do we take the rural parts of the state and have them get all this goodness we're having here in the metro Atlanta yes. area, right? Uh, and that's from uh, incenting businesses to uh, be all over the state, growing things like uh, uh, the agribusiness, uh, technology and agriculture, uh, agritourism. We uh, still have agriculture as our largest source of revenue in the state. Most people don't realize no, that. No, that's a very, very interesting right. important And we point. want to continue to grow that, right? Uh, and there are great things that we can do in order to help that out, but that also includes technology such as broadband access. I'm a passionate person about helping our kids through school and specifically through technology. So I authored the Digital Classroom Act a few years ago and our goal was by 2020 to have every kid K through 12 using a tablet or a computer uh, for their schoolwork. And this really came to me years ago when one of my sons was getting on the school bus with about 30 pounds of books. He could barely stand, you know, he was kind of hunched over. It's so bad for your back. Right. Yet, yet another student who we knew who were going to a, uh, a private school, you know, she was going to school with an iPad. And that's the, the point where I realized we were, we were really behind there. You know, if you think about it, a textbook, there's no search button. Right? There is no interactive video behind that content. There is no uh, learning as you're going through the chapter or remediation if you didn't understand something. Um, there's no real-time updates because when a book is printed, it's almost out of the date the day it finally makes it to the student, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, it, it's kind of silly if you think about it that we're yes. even using those in today's day and, and age. So uh, my goal is to get that done again by 2020. And here's why it's most important. I represent most of North Fulton County and a little bit of Cherokee County, but my area is blessed. We have folks with some of the highest incomes, the highest level of education, the best place to raise a family, the best place for public safety, all those important check boxes, but not the whole state's that same way. And technology is the great equalizer for education. Whether that child is in the most rural, the most suburban, uh, or anywhere in between, they now have an equal playing field. Uh, and I think that's critical for us uh, moving forward. We have a moral obligation to teach our kids. On a level playing field. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, on a smaller point or level, I just remember um, how expensive books were. Um, and that, that can also be a, a hindrance, whereas if you get a device and that can carry you through a few years, you're not having to continually buy books. And um, Well, the studies show not only is it cheaper, uh, it improves student performance, uh, it reduces disciplinary actions, and the list goes on and on of why it's so good. Part of it is just changing people's mind. It's change yeah. management 101, right? right? Uh, it's getting people to adopt and do things different. But imagine now uh, a child who's in uh, Villa Rica, Georgia, is taking a class from somebody who's in Roswell, Georgia, because that's the best teacher, and it's an advanced placement class they can get college credit for. They couldn't have done that before, but with technology they can, uh, and that's just goodness. That's amazing. I am so excited to hear about what you're doing and honestly really reinvigorated um, because I think a lot of times people think, well, if I can't personally affect change, I'm going to focus elsewhere. Um, and you've kind of put that spark back in me like I need to get more involved and uh, really pay attention because I, I can affect change and, and do good things for my county, my city, and this great state of Georgia. So. Senator John Albers, thank you so much for your time and for being here. Thank you. It was a true pleasure. Mm -hmm.